I'm going to be heading out to China in just a few short moments, heading to the airport. God willing, I will make it there safely. And maybe you keep me in your prayers so I can make it there safely. And I'll keep you in my prayers to make sure all goes well with you. I only have about 40 minutes before pickup. I only have about 40 minutes before hotel pickup. And what I want to do today uh, for the first time by way of Facebook Live, what I want to do today for the first time by way of Facebook Live is I want to talk to our young people. I want to talk to our high schoolers. So if you are the guardian, the custodian, the supervisor, or the parent of a young African brother or sister, and of course that includes includes our African Latino population and obviously our African brothers and sisters, all people who identify with their African ancestral heritage. I want to talk to them. So I know you guys are 13 hours behind uh, us. You're 13 hours behind us here in Japan. It's 1030 in Japan in the morning so that means it is 9 30 eastern standard time p.m and i'm certain that most of our young people are still awake so definitely tell them to come and pull up a seat for a hot minute because i want to talk to them now the first thing that i want to say to our young people is that you need to start getting serious about life after high school while you are still in high school. You need to start getting serious about life after high school while you are still in high school. In my experience of having been a school principal and a school psychologist for all of these years, going on 20 years, I have found that our children take too long to get serious about the rest of their life. And as parents and as big brothers and sisters, as aunties, uncles, and grandparents, we have to do a better job of getting our young people serious about life after high school while they are still in high school. Now, obviously, our children have to make a decision. Okay, there's a decision that they have to make, and it's a critical one. And that decision is whether you're gonna go to college, whether you're gonna go to trade school, or whether you are going to go to work, whether you're going to go to college, whether you're going to go to trade school, and whether you're going to go to work. And let me also say that regardless of the path you take, regardless of the path you take, whether it's college, whether it's trade school, or whether it is work, all three of those paths must ultimately land you in the arena of entrepreneurship. Every last one of you has to become an entrepreneur. I want to be very clear with you, young brothers and sisters, my 14-year-olds and 15-year-olds and 16-year-olds and 17-year-olds and 18-year-olds and 19-year-olds. I want to be very, very clear with you that you're going to have to create your own financial opportunity after you're done college or trade school or even while you're working, okay? And that third option of working is not purely working. It is working so that you can apprentice yourself to someone who is expert in a certain area of finance and economics and business so that you can then take off on your own and start your own business. So if I want to open up a cable company, I don't necessarily have to go to college to open up a cable company. I need to apprentice myself to someone who is already a successful cable company operator. If I want to open up my own chain of sneaker stores, I don't need to go to college and get a white man's degree in business. I need to apprentice myself to a brother or sister who already owns a chain of businesses. Okay? So you have to make that decision. College, trade school, or entrepreneurship. Now one thing you young people have to be very, very clear about. Okay? And I can't be even more stressful on this point without discipline you will go nowhere without discipline you will go nowhere now some of you your parents did a good job teaching you discipline and some of the rest of you your parents did not do a good job teaching you discipline you're lazy you're spoiled you're shiftless you get the whole world handed to you okay but guess what 
that's all right because you can still build discipline into yourself. If there's one thing my years of being a school psychologist and a therapist in studying the human mind for almost 20 years has taught me is that every one of us has the capability to build into our character and build out of our character those things that are most important for us to be successful. So it's time to get serious now, okay? And this process of preparing for life after high school begins by the ninth grade, okay? It can begin in the seventh grade, it can begin in the eighth grade, but it must begin by the ninth grade. So you say, Dr. Umar, why does it have to begin in the ninth grade? I'm not graduating for four years. Why am I thinking about life after high school when I just started high school, okay? Because if you're going to college or trade school, or even if you're going to work, all right, your transcript is your passport to an opportunity. Your high school transcript is your passport to an opportunity, which means that every grade you earn in high school, every single grade that you earn in high school will be sent on your transcript to the colleges and trade schools that you're applying to. Now, I used to work in an admissions office when I was an undergrad at Millersville University. I worked in their admissions office and I learned a lot by doing that, okay? And of course, being a principal and being a school psychologist and working with the child study team, I've learned a lot and I've probably mastered the college application process. So your grades will show up on your transcript from ninth through 12th. Why is that important? Many of you want to screw around as a freshman, and many of you want to screw around as a sophomore, and a lot of you want to screw around as a junior, and when senior year comes around, you want to get serious. Well, guess what? We have a problem if you don't get serious about life after high school until you're a senior. You know why? Because your overall QPA, your overall grade point average is contingent upon the grades you earned, not just in 12th grade, but the grades you earned in 9th grade, 10th grade, 11th grade, and 12th grade. So if you fool around your first three years in high school and you get serious the last year, even if you make honor roll, even if you make the dean's list, all three or four marking periods of your senior year, you're still going to graduate with a less than respectable grade point average because those low grades you got as a freshman when you were chasing girls and those low grades you got as a sophomore when you were chasing boys and those low grades you got as a junior when you was cutting class and hanging out with the homies and going to the mall to shop, those grades are going to haunt you later. Said another way, I want you young people to know that your grades are money. Yes, Dr. Umar said your grades are money. And why am I saying your grades are money? Because if your grades are low, you won't be making any money. And if your grades are high, that puts you in a position to do get into a good school and get a good job thereafter. Okay, now let me say this. If you graduate from high school, all of you are going to get into college or trade school. If you graduate from high school, all of you are going to get into a college or a trade school. I'm not concerned about you getting in. I know you're going to get in. How do I know you're going to get in? Because college is a business. Trade school is a business. And college and trade school is a business of making money off of young people by selling them dreams of the future. College and trade school is a business of making money off of young people by selling them dreams of the future. OK, so you're going to get in. But what I'm concerned with you, young brother and you, young sister, is not just getting into college. I want you to go for free, not just getting into trade school. I want you to go for free. Everyone will get in. But what I don't want you to have to suffer from, as so many of your parents do, as do I, is having to pay back those student loans. I don't want you paying back student loans because college is very expensive and is way more expensive for you than it was for me when I began Millersville University in Pennsylvania as a freshman in the fall of 1990. Two. Class of 92, shout out to all my class of 1992 high school graduates out there, okay? Class of 92. 
when I went to Millersville, my first semester freshman year tuition bill was 3500 It was 3500 Today, your first semester freshman tuition bill, along with room and board, is probably going to be no less than 8000 And for some of you, it may be as much as fifteen dollars or $20,000 for one semester. Okay? On average, you're looking at ten dollars to 15000 I don't want you going into debt. For the rest of your life paying off student loans and I don't want your parents going into debt for the rest of their lives paying off student loans okay because what you need to understand is you cannot file for bankruptcy on your student loans do you understand you cannot ever 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 extirpate your responsibility to pay back Uncle Sam for the money that you borrowed now Here's the good news. The good news is over a million dollars, and I believe it's as high as a billion now. I believe it's a billion. So let's go with the billion. Over a billion dollars of unused financial scholarship money is available every year. Let me say that again. A billion dollars of free money is available that goes unused every year. And do you want to know why all that free money goes unused? Why do so many people go to college and pay and take out loans instead of getting a free education when there's so much free money available? And the reason why so many of you will end up paying your college education with loans as opposed to free money because you're too lazy you're too lazy, you're too lazy, and your parents in some cases are too lazy, too lazy, too lazy to do the research, to find out about the scholarships, and to apply for the scholarships. Guess what, young people? Every major library in every city in America has a scholarship section. Now, if you live in a small town, your library may not have a scholarship section. But if you live in places like Philadelphia and New York and you live in Houston and Baltimore and you live in D.C. and you live in all the Detroit and you live in Michigan, I can promise you that there's a scholarship section inside of the main library. The question is, are you motivated enough to get up off your behinds, put down that cell phone, put down that video game, put down your lipstick, put down that blunt, and go on down to the local library and start digging up the scholarships. Every last one of you qualify for over 30 types of scholarships. Every last one of you qualifies for over 30 types of scholarships. There's scholarships if you're a black male. There's scholarships if you're a black female. There's scholarships if you want to major in psychology. There's scholarships if you want to be a doctor. There's scholarships. There's scholarships if you want to be a lawyer. There's scholarships if you come from a single parent mother's home. There's scholarships if you come from a single parent father's home. There's scholarships because you may be partially blind in one eye. There's scholarships because you're diabetic. There's scholarships uh, because you went to prison and you're trying to get your life turned around. There's scholarships because you want to teach in Africa after college. There's scholarships for everything. There's scholarships if you're right-handed. Scholarships if you're left-handed. Yes. Yes. And what I need you young people to understand, especially my athletes. Listen to me, young brothers. Listen to me, young brothers. And I'm also talking about the sisters too, but especially to the young brothers, my athletes, my football, my basketball, my baseball, my track. Hear me out. I don't have a problem with you wanting to be an athlete. I do not have a problem with you wanting to be an athlete, but I do have a problem with the fact that you don't have a backup plan. You don't have a backup plan. If you do not make it to the league, what are you going to do for the rest of your life? Even if you make it to the league, most of you will not be successful enough to live off the money that you live in the league and the average career. For an average athlete in the NFL or the NBA who is not a superstar, it's only about five years. So you don't have to give up your basketball dream. You don't have to give up your track dream. You don't have to give up your football dream. But I need you to have a plan B because I'm sick and tired of visiting the prisons of America and running into young black males who thought that they were so good at basketball and so good at football and thought they was the next Kobe and the next Iverson and the next Michael Vick and it never 
happened and they ended up selling drugs they ended up hustling credit cards they ended up stealing cars i don't want that for you young brother Prisons are filled with high school superstars who didn't realize until it was too late that you are not good enough to make it to the league. Let me put this in a statistical statement. You are more likely to be struck by lightning than you are to make it as a professional. You are more likely to be struck by lightning than you are to make it as a successful professional in any of the major leagues. Only 1% of all high school athletes will become professional. Only 1% of all high school athletes will become professional. You don't have to give up your dream. You might be the next one. But in case you are not, what else are you going to do? Let me say this another way. Have you noticed that even amongst successful African-American athletes, we never retire from the sport until our skill and health has diminished so significantly that we're forced into retirement? Have you noticed that? And have you noticed that white athletes, whether they're good as us or not, it doesn't matter. But have you noticed with white athletes, they retire at a respectable age. They don't stay on the football field or on a basketball court until they're too damn old that they got to be pushed off or not have their contract renewed. You know why? The reason why that is, is because the white athletes, while they were in college, they actually finished their degrees. They actually took college seriously because they knew that one day they will no longer be able to continue on the court and they wanted to graduate to the front office. They wanted to graduate to the executive jobs or they wanted to move into a totally different arena of life. Now, this is not only true for whites. There's a lot of blacks who do it. When I was at Millersville University, one of the black justices for the Minnesota State Supreme Court was once a Minnesota Viking. He was a successful Minnesota Viking. He took his education seriously. He got his law degree. He retired at his respectable age and he became a state Supreme Court justice for Minnesota. So it's not just white folk, but I want to be clear, white people, because they know that their talent normally isn't as great as yours to end up, you know, being in the league long enough to live off of of, of that money, they walk away at a respectable age. They still have their health and they pursue another career and they pursue another career. Black athletes, all we know is athletes. That's all the hell we know, okay? So I need you young brothers and sisters to make sure that you're not putting all of your eggs in one basket, okay? So the college and trade school process begins in the ninth grade, all right? If you notice, I did not mention military as an option. Why didn't Dr. Umar Johnson mention military as an option? I didn't mention the Marine Corps. I didn't mention the Army. I didn't mention the Navy. I didn't mention the Coast Guard. I didn't mention the Reserves. And I'm not going to mention them. Do you want to know why? Because peacetime in America is over. Up until the year 2000, from Vietnam until the year 2000, okay, for about 25 years, you could go into the military and live a nice life retire and never have to go to war because it was peacetime it was peacetime but guess what with the presidency of former president george w bush that ushered in the 21st century y2k america is officially back to war america is officially searching for drugs and natural resources under the disguise of making the world safe for democracy now i can't get all of us into that okay i can't get into that right now that's another lecture for another time but staying on point if you go into the military today if you go into the military today there's a 75 percent chance okay there's a 75 percent chance that you will be ushered off to war if you look at the iraqi war okay african americans were disproportionately represented in the frontline soldiers when you look at the afghani war african americans were disproportionately represented as frontline soldiers now the military will tell you that you can become an officer without a college degree and it is true but what i want you to understand is although you can become an officer in the marine corps or the army or the coast guard or the navy without a college degree it is very difficult it is very 
very difficult to move up that chain of command without the degree. So even if you want to be in the military, it would benefit you better to go to trade school first and get your associates or get your bachelor's degree and then go into the military. But I don't want you in the military because I don't ever want your mom or dad to get that knock at the door letting them know that their child was murdered fighting for white supremacy, letting them know that their child was murdered fighting for drugs and oil. Your life is too valuable to us. And to be honest with you, black people ain't got no business fighting for white folks. Black people ain't got no business putting their life on the line for the United States government. The United States government has done too much for too long against black folks for us to turn around and sacrifice our lives for this country. So I don't want you in the military. Now, some of you are going to come back. Some of you are going to say, wait a minute, doc, I can get the GI bill. They will pay for me to go to college. Well, that's true, but there's also a catch 22. There's also a catch 22. I have a lot of friends. I have a lot of friends who went to the military. I went to a military high school, a paramilitary high school, Scotland School for Veterans Children, Chambersburg, Pennsylvania. I got a lot of friends. Some went to Scotland. Some of them didn't go to Scotland. They signed up for the Army, signed up for the Marines, signed up for the Navy, signed up for the Coast Corps, told they were going to get the GI Bill. We're going to give you $20,000 a year to go to college. We're going to give you twenty. dollars thousand dollars a year to go to college well guess what there's only one problem guess what there's only one problem your obligations to uncle sam your obligations to donald trump your obligations to the department of defense and your obligations to the united states government significantly outweighs your personal dreams and desires for your life what are you saying dr johnson I'm saying that even if they tell you they're going to give you that GI Bill, if you get called up to go to Iraq or if you get called up to go to South Korea, if you get called up to go to Afghanistan, if you get called up to go somewhere and make the world safe for so-called democracy, you're really making the world safe for hypocrisy. You're making the world. But what happens is you're going to get a letter in the mail and say you have to report in two weeks. And you're going to say, I just got accepted to Howard University Medical School. You're going to say, I just got accepted to Morehouse College. I just got accepted to Hampton. I just got accepted to Lincoln. I just got accepted to Elizabeth City. I just got accepted to Badoon Cookman. I just got accepted to South Carolina State. And guess what's going to happen? They're going to say, too bad. Contact the college. Let them know that you're being deployed. You can resume your studies when you get back. So you get deployed for a year or two. You come back. You, Howard says, sure, come back in two years. We're, we're going to hold your spot. You come back for two years. You're ready to start Howard University again. And guess what? Guess what? Then you get another letter. We got to go make the world safe for democracy in Nigeria or somewhere, okay? We got to go make the world safe for democracy in the Congo where we dropped off AIDS. So guess what? You got to tell Howard again that I need you to hold my spot because I got to go back to fight for white man drugs and money. And you know what happens? They send you around and they run you around and they send you around and they run you around. And for a lot of you, you will never get your degree. What they never tell you. It's although they'll pay for your college, what they don't tell you is they're going to manipulate your service time. They're going to manipulate your service time. They're going to manipulate your service time so you never complete your studies. Now, some of you will. Some of you will. I got friends who were successful enough to finish their degree in the military. But I'm telling you, they're not bringing you into the military to pay for your college. OK, they're not asking you to join the army so they can pay for you to go to college. They're asking you to join the army so you can go and die for white supremacy. Stay the hell away from the military. You got me now. If you got a young brother who's been in and out of jail and the judge says, listen, I'm tired of seeing you in my prison. You're going to go to the army or I'm sending you to jail for 10 years for selling drugs, whatever the case may be. I can understand why he's going. It's the only option. But for most of you, you have other options. And you don't need the GI Bill because I just told you a billion dollars worth of financial aid goes unused every year, okay? Now, remember, they're going to get all your grades from 9th through 12th. They're going to get all your grades from 9th through 12th. Now, I want you 
to be very careful about how you treat your teachers in high school. I want you to be very careful about how okay you treat your teachers in high school and before I get into that let me invite all of you young people before I get into that let me invite all of you young people to join me this summer for the second annual Dr. Umar Johnson Black College and Consciousness Tour. I host a college and consciousness tour every summer for 11 to 17 year old brothers and sisters. If you're 18 or 19 and you're still in high school, I can make an exception for you. You're still in high school, not a problem. And for two weeks from June the 28th to July 12th, for two weeks from June the 28th until July 12th, I'm going to take you to Cheney University, Lincoln University, Maryland Eastern Shore, Delaware State. I'm going to take you to Coppin State, Bowie State, Morgan State. I'm going to take you to Howard. I'm going to take you to Virginia State. I'm going to take you to Hampton. I'm going to take you to Norfolk. And we may hit some other black colleges. So you're going to go to at least a dozen black colleges. Okay. But not only that, I call it the Black College and Consciousness Tour because I'm also going to take you to the Malcolm and Betty Shabazz Center, where Malcolm X was murdered. I'm going to take you to the world-famous Apollo Theater. I'm going to take you to the Schomburg Center for Research in Black Culture. Arthur Schomburg, who was a good friend of the Honorable Marcus Garvey, who built the largest black organization in modern history. Arthur Schomburg was a Puerto Rican African. He was a Puerto Rican African, okay, who was one of the first black men to begin the systematic study of black history. He was one of the first black men to begin the systematic study of black history. History. And he in the Schomburg Center houses the largest collection of information on African American people in the world. The largest collection of printed information, okay, on African American people in the world. They have Malcolm X's original letters, Marcus Garvey's original papers. So you're going to go to the Schomburg. And then I'm also going to take you to Harriet Tubman's house where she lived. We're going to go to the Harriet Tubman Museum, the Frederick Douglass grave. I'm going to take you to the Black African Holocaust Museum in Philadelphia, the only Holocaust Museum in America. I'm going to take you to the Great Blacks and Wax Museum. I want you to have some fun. So I'm going to take you to Great Adventures and Dorney Park and to the movies and to the beach. Okay. And then I'm going to take you to the Benjamin Banneker house. Benjamin Banneker was that black man who modernized the clock he invented the almanac he charted the stars okay he mapped out the entire solar system okay he was also a proud black man who challenged thomas jefferson to a written debate on explaining how can you say all men are created equal in the declaration of independence but yet you own over 400 black people yourself we're going to go uh on down and we're going to visit Harriet Tubman's hometown, the Reginald F. Lewis Museum. We're going to go to the all-new Smithsonian Museum in D.C. for African-American history and culture. I know a lot of you haven't been able uh, to do that. Okay. And we're going to go to Nat Turner land in Virginia, the Nat Turner land where Nat Turner, a black preacher, led the bloodiest and most powerful and most revolutionary slave revolt in American history that shook the foundation of American slavery and forced white people to start considering freedom for black people because they feared that other black people would rise up to crush racism. So if you want to go tell your mom or dad that they can register you right now, you can register right now. You can register right now. You can go to DrUmarJohnson.com and click on my Eventbrite link. If you're on your cell phone, you want to click on who is Dr. Umar or you want to click on uh, more information and scroll to the bottom. If you're on a laptop computer, you just go to DrUmarJohnson.com and click on the Eventbrite link. Okay, Or you can go directly to my Eventbrite page. You can go directly to my Eventbrite page, which is Prince of Pan-Africanism dot eventbrite dot com prince of pan africanism dot eventbrite dot com i hope y'all can come it does cost two thousand dollars it actually costs more than two thousand dollars okay it costs more but i pay the rest okay and so your parents just need to pay a thousand now and they need to pay another thousand by june the 18th okay so you can get a thousand from your mom or a thousand from your dad or you go around to your aunts and uncles and ask each of your aunts and uncles to pay a hundred or two hundred so you can go on this tour because it will change your life you will meet people from the admissions office of all these different black colleges delaware state university of maryland eastern shore you, you understand and you can actually apply 
you will be able to apply for college while you're with Dr. Umar on the Black College and Consciousness Tour. Now, some of you may already go on college tours, but I bet you none of you have ever been on a Black College and Consciousness Tour. Most college tours only take you to colleges. I'm going to not only take you to colleges, I'm going to take you to landmark places and landmark people who are significant towards understanding the Black experience in America. So again, register Registration is up. I hope to see you guys. We're going to have fun. Pennsylvania, Maryland, Delaware, Virginia, D.C. It's going to be powerful. And I hope you guys can come. Okay? So, getting back on track. Ninth grade. For those of you who are going to college and trade school, and remember what I said, those of you who simply want to become an apprentice and work under someone until you master this skill, nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. But I'm going to be honest. If it were up to me, every last one of you, male or female, would go to trade school for two years before you go to college or before you go off to work. If it were up to me, every last one of you would go to trade school for two years before you went off to college or before you went off to work as an apprentice. Why? Because if you learn a livable wage skill, if you learn a livable wage skill, if you become a barber or a beautician, if you become an electrician, if you become a carpenter, if you become a plumber, if you become a brick mason, if you become a woodworker, if you become a computer networker, guess what? If you become a wielder, a welder, I know that you will always be able to make some money and I know that you will always be able to feed your family. OK, a college degree doesn't guarantee that you're going to be able to feed your family. And so for those of you who are going to college, I want you, OK, to take your time choosing your major. I want you to take your time choosing your major. Why? Because colleges manipulate black children all the time. What am I saying when I say colleges manipulate black children all the time? I'm saying that when you get accepted to a university, especially a PWI, PWI means predominantly white institution. And that's another thing. I want all of you to go to historically black colleges. I'm going to say it again. I want all of you to go to historically black colleges. I'm going to say it again. I want all of you to go to historically black colleges because if y'all don't start going to historically black colleges, we're going to lose them. We're going to lose them. Now, me, myself, I didn't attend a historically black college. I got accepted to Morehouse, but the out-of-state tuition was too expensive, but I regret it. I regret it. As someone who speaks at historically black colleges more than any other scholar in the United States, every time I go to a HBCU, you know, I just wish that I could have attended one as a student. I'll never know what it was like to be at a campus totally dedicated to me. I'll never know what it's like to be at a campus with nothing but black Greek fraternities and black Greek sororities and black professors and black organizations and black consciousness and black events. So try to go to a HBCU. But there's one exception. There's one exception. If a predominantly white institution is giving you scholarship money, if a predominantly white institution is giving you scholarship money that's going to offset your bill more than an HBCU, I'm going to tell you like I tell your parents, okay? I'm going to tell you like I tell your parents, follow the money. Follow the money. Follow always follow the money and for my parents out there you got to stop letting your children manipulate you into debt every year i run into parents who say my daughter got a full scholarship to university of uh to we hate white we hate black people university my daughter got a full scholarship to we hate white people university in south dakota and she turned it down because she wanted to go to howard or she turned it down because she wanted to go to south carolina state or she turned it down because she wanted to go to bethune cookman okay that's when you as a parent have to step in and say, I know you want to do an HBCU. I know you do. But how about you go here for two years, take the scholarship for two years, and then your junior year, let's transfer you back to an HBCU. So we're going to set it up so you graduate from an HBCU, but your mommy and daddy need you to start at a PWI so you can get your first two years under your belt. 
Okay, get your first two years under your belt, your general education requirements, and then after you get your first two years under your belt, I'm going to transfer you to an HBCU. That way, I only have to pay for two years of college instead of four. How about you work with mommy and daddy? Okay, and then mommy and daddy, you're also going to tell them that the only way you're going to transfer them to an HBCU is if they have at least a 3.0 at the end of this sophomore year at the PWI. Ain't no need to transfer them to no HBCU where you may have to pay a higher tuition bill and they're barely getting by. I don't want you wasting money on lazy black children who barely getting by, okay? So take the free money. Don't tell the university you're only gonna be there for two years because they'll try to make you pay it back, okay? Something came up, I'm not comfortable here, I really have to go, thank you, and then you transfer to the HBCU, okay? And if you stay at the predominantly white institution for four years, for your graduate school, go to an HBCU for graduate school. Go to an HBCU for graduate school. I wanted to go to Howard for my doctorate in psychology. I wanted to go to Howard for my doctorate in psychology, but Howard didn't send me an application for over a year, okay? So I got accepted into the white school before I got my application from the black school, CP time. I'm not knocking Howard, I support Howard, but black colleges, you got to get off that CP time. When somebody say they want an application, get them the damn application. So remember, okay, ninth grade, let's talk about what you need to do each year. Let's talk about what you need to do each year. And I'm probably going to have to end this, but I'll pick it up in China. I'm probably going to have to end this in a few minutes because it's 11 o'clock in the morning here. But I'll pick it up when I get to China, God willing, in Shanghai. Okay? On my way to Shanghai. Now, and I know you're probably saying, is this guy really a doctor? He got on a wave cap, Philly's hat. I am at... Yes. You don't have to look like a white man to be an educated black man. You don't have to look like a white man to be an educated black man. I have six degrees. I have six, okay? I have a bachelor's in psychology. I have a bachelor's in political science. I have a master's in school psychology. I have a master's in clinical psychology. I have a master's in educational leadership, and I have a doctorate in clinical psychology, okay? All from historically white colleges, unfortunately, okay? So I am... A doctor I don't have to look like it I'm a black man okay and that's one thing I want y'all to understand I never want you I never want you I never want you to lose your street credibility don't ever give up your street credibility in order to get your credentials too many educated black people turn into white people after college I don't want you turning into white people after college because you're not going to be any good to your community if you turn in to a white person after graduation keep it black now ninth grade ninth grade what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to start formulating a list of colleges and trade schools that you want to attend and ninth grade you're supposed to start formulating a list of college and trade schools that you want to attend go online what you want to major in not every college has every major never choose the school before you choose the major never choose the school before you choose the major never choose the school before you choose the major why am I saying that if you want to be a meteorologist and you go to a university that doesn't have meteorology how are you ever going to become a meteorologist if you want to be a psychologist and you go to a university that doesn't even have a psychology program how are you ever going to be a psychologist don't choose your colleges off of the schools you see on television I like the University of Michigan football team so I want to go to the University of Michigan that is absolutely ridiculous okay you say something like that and I'm gonna pull out my intelligence test and see what your IQ score is because you are not supposed to be choosing colleges based on their public popularity you're not supposed to be choosing in colleges based on their athletic notoriety you're supposed to be choosing a college because they have what you need are y'all following me they have what you need so first you're going to check out all the hbcus that have your program and then you're going to check out the predominantly white institutions that have your program now that's ninth grade ninth grade you get your list together ninth grade you get your list together ninth grade you get your list together your list should be about 50 by the time you finish your ninth grade year, my 14 and 15 year olds, by the time you finish your ninth grade year, you should have a list of about 35 to 50 colleges you wouldn't mind going to. Okay? Sophomore year, you're going to take that list of 50 and you're going to start narrowing it down. You're going to take that list of 50 and you're going to narrow it down to about 20 to 30. You're going to narrow it down to about 20 or 30. That's your job as a sophomore. Do they have my major? How much do they cost? Where are they located? Will I be comfortable here? Can my parents afford it? Narrow your list down from 50 to about 25 or 30, right? 
And then your junior year is the year of college visitation. Did you hear what I said, parents? Did you hear what I said, parents? Can you? Velmia Shakur. Anyhow, so your 11th grade year, okay, you're going to start visiting colleges. You're going to start visiting colleges. I want you to visit colleges before you make a decision. I want you to visit colleges before you make a decision. Why does Dr. Umar Johnson want you to visit colleges before you make a decision? Because colleges lie. Colleges are about making money. They're businesses. They lie like everybody else. The college is going to send you a brochure, right? They're going to send you a brochure. It'll be folded up and they'll say, come to We Hate Black People University. And you open it up and they're going to have pretty pictures and pretty women and attractive guys and they're going to show you a dorm room and the dorm room is going to be nice with a refrigerator overlooking the water and it's just going to look like the place to be and they're going to show you a big swimming pool and a nice cafeteria and a state-of-the-art athletic center and then you're going to show up and you're going to say yo this ain't what i saw in your brochure and then they're going to say well that's not the way our campus looks now. That's the way we want our campus to look later. We're raising money, so, but why didn't you say that in the brochure? I thought that's how the campus looked now. Well, we're sorry. We actually did say it at the bottom in the small print, but you needed a magnifier to see it. So young brothers and sisters, I need you to visit the college to make sure you like it. Never make a decision based off the brochure. Never make a decision on what college College you're going to go to okay based on the brochure all right so let your parents know mommy and daddy you're going to have to spend about five thousand dollars flying with me and driving with me around the country i know we don't have it but you have to find it because if we don't sacrifice this five thousand dollars my junior year if we don't sacrifice this five thousand dollars my junior year and I go to a college I really don't like and I drop out, that might end up costing us thirty or sixty thousand dollars. So mom and dad, let's not be cheap. Let's go and investigate. Let's go see. Let's go to family day. Let's go to student orientation and let's make a really, 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 really good decision. Okay? Now, let me back on up. Let me back on up. Okay? There's three questions you need to ask yourself if you're going to go to college because college is, may put you in debt. Now, we're going to try to get you to go free with the scholarship money, right? There's enough scholarship money, so all of you watching this should go for free. But in case you can't or you don't get the money, the scholarship money, college is going to put you and your family into debt. So I need to make sure you can rebound from that debt. So that means that you got to answer three questions for Dr. Umar in order to go to college okay question number one are you dedicated are you dedicated and disciplined enough are you dedicated and disciplined enough to go to college without your parents being there to get that work done to earn good grades so that you'll be in a position to pay off those loans when you graduate. Because if you're not disciplined and you're going to go to Cheney or Lincoln or Morehouse or Spelman or Howard or Hampton or Virginia State or South Carolina State and you're going to play around and screw around and F around and get kicked out or get put on academic probation or drop out, I don't want you going to college. Because if you drop out, now you're minus 30000 if you drop out, now you're minus $60,000 in student debt. We don't want that. That's why I prefer you go to trade school. And I want your parents to make sure you visit some trade schools. In two years, you can be a licensed plumber. In two years, you can be a licensed architect. In two years, you can be a licensed barber or cosmetologist. In two years, you can be a licensed welder. These people make just as much money as doctors and lawyers and engineers and psychologists and pharmacists. So if it was, if it was up to me, go to trade school. I would tell you to tell your parents, I'm going to go to trade school for two years, mom and dad. Because trade school ain't going to cost you a fraction of what college costs you. Trade school isn't going to even cost you a fraction of what college is going to cost you. So you say, mom and dad, I want to go to trade school for two years. So you graduate at 18, you graduate trade school at 20, right? You start as a freshman at 20. Now, you're going to be a couple years older, but guess what? 
you're going to be hundreds of years in front of your classmates in college because all they're going to have is a degree. You're going to have a degree plus a trade. You understand? So if you don't want to be a doctor or a lawyer or a teacher, you say, I'm just going to open up my barbershop. I'm just going to open up my electrical repair shop. I'm just going to go into business and I'm going to become a car repairman. You know how much money auto mechanics make? Do you know how much money that auto mechanics make? Do you know how much money? If, you're, if your transmission go on your car, your transmission can cost you anywhere from $1,500 to $5,000. It will take that mechanic three hours to fix your transmission, and in three hours, he made $5,000. Do you hear me? So I prefer you go to trade school so you have a financial insurance card. Trade school is your financial insurance card. But if you, and ladies too, ladies, you can go to trade school too. Okay, and for my young ladies, don't ever let nobody tell you that you can't do something because you're a woman. One of the things I find with our young sisters is that y'all often reduce your opportunities and y'all often, uh, I gotta put some socks on my feet. This floor is cold. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. One minute, one minute, one minute. Right. Excuse me. Ugh. I wanted to do this on Instagram too, but for some reason, Japan is fooling with my Instagram. Okay. So, all right. Where were we? Da 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 da. I want you to go to trade school. Okay. But ninth grade, you get your list together. 10th grade, you narrow your list down. 11th grade, you visit the schools. 12th grade should be your easiest year. 12th grade should be your easiest year. 12th grade of high school, you should not be running around pulling your hair out. That should be your easiest year. Okay? Now, I'm going to tell you something that you probably didn't think about, and I want you all to think about it. I want you to think about it with your parent. Did I wash my hands? <laughs> y'all niggeros is crazy. But listen, okay? There are tremendous opportunities for African Americans with college education who are willing to live and work outside of the United States. Let me say it again. There's tremendous opportunity for African Americans who are willing to live and work outside of America if you have a college degree. Now, if you tell me, if you tell the bathroom door was closed, that's just the way they do it in Japan. I shut the door. So if y'all heard the toilet flush, okay. The door was shut. Okay. This is a small room. You know, Tokyo has a lot of people. Well, I'm not in Tokyo. I'm in Nagoya. But China and Japan, they're overpopulated. So the hotel rooms are really small. So your bathroom is like right next to the bed. So you're probably going to hear the toilet flush. But the question becomes, why the hell are you worrying about my toilet instead of focusing on the information? Ashe? Ashe. So anyhow, okay, brothers and sisters, if you want to live and work outside the United States, Okay, you can do very well here in Tokyo. I'm, excuse me, I'm in Nagoya, but I'm in Japan. I was in Tokyo two days ago, and I'll be going to China. Okay, China, Africa, Asia, Central South America. If you tell me, Doc, I want to go to college, and I want to work outside of America, go ahead. 
I ha you have my support because you're going to do tremendously well outside of the 50 states because of racism, because of the United States government and racism. They don't want to help black people get ahead. They don't like to help us get ahead. So if you're trying to look for a job and, and you have a degree in America, it can be tough. Right now in the United States, we have over two million African-Americans with college degrees who cannot find work. This is why I want you to think very seriously about college. I'm not against you going. I'm against you going if you're not dedicated. I'm not against you going. I'm against you going if you're not dedicated because I don't want you and your parents to pick up a whole bunch of debt. Are you following me? Are you following me? Okay, so it's all about knowing yourself. Because I'm going to tell you right now, if you barely graduated high school and you're my son or daughter, if you barely graduated high school and you're my son or daughter, I'm not paying for you to go to college. You're going to go to community college. I pay for you to go to community college. $91 a credit. $91 a credit. $91 a credit. But I am not going to pay $30,000 a year for a child to go to college when they barely got out of high school. You barely got out of high school living in my house. So how am I going to believe that you're going to be successful at Howard and Hampton and Lincoln and Cheney? Okay. How are you going to be successful? Okay. At Bethune Cookman and, 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 and Elizabeth City State. How are you going to be successful? Okay. Not living in my house when you barely graduated from high school in my house. Uh -uh. You got to earn your worth. You're going to community college. You got to earn your worth. And if you graduate with honors from community college, and then I will pay for you to go to a regular college, okay? So the first question, do you have the discipline and dedication? Second question, are you majoring in something that is relevant? Are you majoring, young brother and sister, in something that is relevant? Listen to me. Every college, the major colleges, they offer over 100 degrees. Some of them offer over 200 degrees. Okay, any of these big colleges, even the black schools, they're going to offer a lot of degrees, right? But guess what? Out of those 200 degrees that they offer at the University of We Hate Black People main campus, of those 200 degrees that they're offering at the University of We Hate Black People main campus, only 25 are economically relevant for your life. What do I mean by economically relevant? I mean, why are you getting a degree? in European art history because there's no job waiting for you with a degree in European art history. Why are you getting a degree in grasshopper reproduction on Pluto during the summertime? If you graduate magna cum laude with a, with a doctorate in grasshopper reproduction in, on the planet Pluto during the spring, what job are you going to get? What job are you going to get? Huh? If you get a master's degree in dinosaur anthropology, a master's degree in dinosaur anthropology, can you please explain to me how you're going to pay your rent and your car note and your gas and electric and your water bill? How are you going to pay all that with a degree that ain't worth anything? Make sure your degree is worth something. And let me tell you something else. Never let the guidance counselors at college try to force you. Never let the guidance counselors at college try to force you to pursue a major you do not want. They do this at the white racist colleges. They will tell you, I understand you want to study pre-law. I understand you want to study pre-law, but we have too many freshmen already enrolled in pre-law. I'm sorry. How about social work? How about spaceship science? Uh, how about uh, studying earthworm technology? Uh-uh. You tell them, for the money I'm paying to come to this school... I'm a major in what I want to major in. And if you don't want to honor that, I will make an appointment to meet with the dean of this department and the provost of this university to let them know that I feel I am being blackballed. OK, but we say white bald because we come from an African centered frame of reference. So black ain't evil for us. White is evil for us. So we're going to say 
I am being white balled out of the major that I want to pursue by that particular league by your law program and I don't like it I came here to study pre-law and I was not told I was not told when I got accepted that I cannot study pre-law okay so I'm telling you, Dean, and I'm telling you, Provost, that I better be put in that law program because if I'm not, I may have to file a complaint yet with the United States Department of Education Office of Civil Rights. Doesn't this university get federal money? Doesn't this university get federal money? And don't you know that there's certain titles of the 1964 Civil Rights Act that does not allow you to discriminate against me on the basis of color? You don't want me to be a lawyer because I'm black? You don't want me in a pre-med program because you don't think I can cut it? Well, guess what? I can cut it. And if I don't get in that program, I'm going to end up cutting some money from the school once I let black America know that y'all tolerate racism. I'm here to be a lawyer. I'm not here to study earthworms. I'm not here to study dinosaurs. I'm not here to study Pluto. I'm going to be a lawyer so I can fight for my people in the courts. Facts. Fact. Don't let them tell you you can't major in what you want to major in. You don't ever let them do that. I'd rather you transfer to another school than major in something you don't want to major in because if you don't like it, you ain't going to want to do it. If you don't like it, you're not going to want to do it. You got to choose something you love. You're going to be doing this for the rest of your life, young man, young woman. You got to choose something that you love. I decided I wanted to be a psychologist in third grade. I decided I wanted to, in third grade, I don't know how I knew, I don't know why I knew, but I knew that I wanted to be a psychologist in the third grade, and I stuck with it, okay? And that's another thing. Don't choose degrees and majors based off of what you think is going to earn you a lot of money. Yes, it needs to be relevant, but you got to love it. It needs to be economically relevant, but you got to love it. You got to love it, okay? In other words, you want to choose something you would do even if you didn't get paid for it. Even if I didn't get paid, I would want to be a therapist. Even if I didn't get paid, I would want to help people f work through their personal problems. Even if I didn't want to get even if I didn't get paid, I still want to help parents fight to keep their kids out of special ed and ADHD. So choose something that you love. Do you understand me? Okay? Because the two most important questions you're going to have to answer the two most important questions that you're going to have to answer. Okay. What do I want to do with the rest of my life? And who do I want to spend the rest of my life with? Those are critical. That determines your happiness and peace of mind. That determines your happiness and peace of mind. Does my life have a purpose? Does my life have a per See, you can get a job. You can work for the post office. Post office is a good job. You can work for public transportation. Public transportation is a good job. You can work for the city. It's a good job, right? But there's a difference between a job and a career. There's a difference between a job and a career. There's a difference between a job and a career. And I want you to understand the difference. Okay. A job is something you get paid to do the same thing every day, day in, day out. You're not asked really what you think about what you do. You're not asked to use your intelligence and your experience to impact your reality. You come to work, you clock in, you do the job, you clock out, you get paid. That's the job. People who work on jobs are paid for time on the job. People who work at jobs are paid for time on the job. Now, let me tell you what a career is. And for my adults, to let my adults know, and I better put these socks on before my feet freeze. Oof, floor is cold in Japan. For the adults out there, if you work with children, if you work with children... And you want me to come and do a seminar preparing for the rest of your life for children. That's something that I do. OK, if you work at a prison or juvenile detention center. I do not charge. I do not charge for work inside of jails and detention centers. OK. 
I do not charge when I come to Africa and Asia unless the event is going to be a for-profit event. If it's for-profit, you have to pay in Africa and Japan. But if it's not for-profit, you don't have to pay because I believe, young people, this is a lesson I want you to... And I think I'm going to have to start doing a regular message to young people by Facebook Live. What y'all think, brothers and sisters? Do I need to start doing this regularly? I never thought about that. A regular message, maybe once a month to the young people, because a lot of them don't know what to do and where to go, and they ain't got the people helping them, okay? But for the adults who work with young people, I can come and do this in person, okay? Now, if you work at a school district, school districts have million-dollar budgets. They need to pay. School districts have million dollar budgets. They're going to pay me because they bring on white folks who ain't even got half my credentials and they pay them buku bucks. So they're going to pay me. OK, but if it's free, you just got to get me there. Young people. In life, I want you to always find something that you hold relevant, sacred. Have something sacred. You see how I say I don't charge to speak at prisons and juvenile detention centers. I don't charge when I come to Africa. You know why? Because being African is very sacred to me. There's no price for that. Helping young people is very safe for me. There's no price for that. You understand? That's why I do the Tuesday morning call for parents because it's very sick. What's today? Today, Tuesday? Is today Tuesday? What's today? I think I missed my Tuesday morning call. Okay. But anyhow, you got to find out what's sacred in your life. You got to have something in your life that nobody can buy from you. Nobody can buy. It's like if you're a devout Christian or a devout. Right. You say, I'm going to be a Christian till I die, Muslim till I die. Well, you got to have principles, things you stand for 